Now back to Europe. The motor industry is in turmoil. On Friday, Saab filed for protection from its creditors after parent group General Motors announced huge cuts. Sister group Opel's also in talks about emergency funding to safeguard its future. And as you know, that's just the tip of the iceberg. Well, Hal uh, Ravache is the president of Stevens Institute of Technology, a U.S. university specializing in technology and engineering. And I know you've got some ideas, Hal, as to how we all get out of this mess. <laughs> so what are your thoughts? If we start with, with Europe, uh, I know Europe, to a great degree, is a victim of what's happening in the U.S. as well. Yes, but there are some bright spots. The percentage of GDP manufacturing in Europe, uh, for example, in the U.K., Germany, Sweden, and Switzerland is a lot higher than it is in the U.S., whereas today it's only 12.7 percent. In the countries in Europe I just mentioned, it's all above 20 percent. So there are some bright spots. Uh, the stimulus package, unfortunately, does not really address the rebuilding of U.S. manufacturing. It has some good ideas as far as infrastructure, but sadly, we have lost sight of what is providing excellent jobs in the past for U.S. citizens as it does in Europe. So we really need to address this through innovation in all sectors of manufacturing. And, and obviously that's something you're saying that's lacking in the States, but presumably that's a model that can be implemented anywhere. In I think it would be implemented worldwide. And while we talk about the possible demise of General Motors, there's a bright spot there, for example. It has a very strong position in China. So if it can get out of this dilemma now, I think its future could be very strong. But we in the United States have lost sight of manufacturing. We bought the argument that the service sector would provide wealth for everyone. It simply hasn't. So we have to go back and look at fundamentals. What are the fundamentals? In manufacturing, you need to apply innovation every step of the way, from design, material selection, how much energy you use. And then we have to address our workforce. Sadly, the U.S. workforce, K-12 through education, is lacking. We have tremendous amount of regulation, which unfortunately is only going to intensify with the scandals you just mentioned. But we threw the baby out with the bathwater in regulation. So we now we have to go back, check ourselves and saying, okay, we have all these banking scandals. How much regulation are we going to put on business? Because we could kill it. So it's a very delicate situation. It's a very delicate situation, but what you're saying is, is, is a huge change, isn't it? And that would take a lot of time, a, a lot of money. I mean, how do you make that happen? Because as you say, the U.S., U.K., other economies have plunged into the service sector. Well, just as President Obama is trying now to reach bipartisan support, he should go on national television and say, we are going to rebuild manufacturing. In the long run, that's the best source of jobs for lower-end Americans, for beginning in the economic cycle, for example, and say, I'm going to invest in it. We're going to have academic university partnerships. Because today, universities chase the glamorous. Manufacturing is not seen as glamorous. We need to capture that again. And when we do this and tackle our educational system, we'll address a fundamental flaw in our society in the U.S. We have the highest incarceration rate in the world, a shameful statistic for such an advanced nation, right? And it's not that we have bad people. There's not opportunity because they aren't educated well. All right. Well, Hal Ravache, I could speak to you for hours, I'm sure. Uh, but we can't on this program, I'm afraid. Thank you very much indeed, though, Thank for coming you, in. Sally. And